Hello, welcome to part 11 of 500 Physiotherapy MCQ series. We have given the explanation to each and every answer in the description and detailed explanation inside the Telegram channel. Now let's do not waste much time. Let's move to question number 201. Which of the following evaluation below is the most important part of physical evaluation of an athlete? Option A. Nephrological. Option B. Pulmonary. Option C. Cardiovascular. Option D. Neurogenic. And the answer is... Option C. Cardiovascular. Now let's move to question number 202. A 22-year-old football player present with a right knee pain. His history reveals he received a posteriorly directed force to his knee pain. Physical examination reveals a positive posterior draw is sign. What injury has the patient most likely sustained? Option A. Petalofemoral syndrome. Option B. Anterior cruciate ligament injury. Option B. Posterior cruciate ligament injury. Option D. Medial collateral ligament injury. And the answer is... Option C. Posterior cruciate ligament injury. Now let's move to question number 203. What is Bunkart lesion? Option E. Tear or avulsion of the anterior glenoid labrum. Option B. Compression fracture of the posterior humeral head. Option C. Injury to the superior glenoid labrum and biceps tendon. Option D. Compression of the brachial plexus and subclavian vessels as they exit between the superior shoulder girdle and the first rib. And the answer is... Option A. Tear or avulsion of the anterior glenoid labrum. Now let's move to question number 204. A positive form and sign hints to which nerve being injured. Option A. Median nerve. Option B. Radial nerve. Option C. Ulnar nerve. Option D. Musculocutaneous nerve. And the answer is... Option C. Ulnar nerve. Now let's move to question number 205. Compression of which nerve is commonly misdiagnosed as lateral epicondylitis? Option A. Posterior endocious nerve. Option B. Anterior endocious nerve. Option C. Medial nerve. Option D. CAT1 nerve root. And the answer is... Option A. Posterior endocious nerve. Now let's move to question number 206. Little leg elbow. Option A. Involves the lateral elbow region. Option B is an acute dislocation of the elbow. Option C occurs most commonly between the ages of 13 and 15. Option D occurs in athletes complaining of median elbow pain. And the answer is... Option D occurs in athletes complaining of median elbow pain. Now let's move to question number 207. Tennis elbow typically. Option D is an acute lesion lasting less than a few weeks. Option B present with pain and tenderness of the needle epicondyle. Option C does not affect the grip strength. Option D can occur as a result of poor tennis backhand stroke. And the answer is... Option D can occur as a result of poor tennis backhand stroke. Now let's move to question number 208. What describes a swan neck deformity? Option A. Hyperextended metacarpopharyngeal and distal interpharyngeal joints and flexion deformity at proximal interpharyngeal joint. Option B. Synovitis at the ulnar styloid with resultant disruption of the ulnar collateral ligament. Option C. Hyperextension of the MCP and DIP joint with flexion of the PIP joint. Option D. MCP and PIP joint hyperextension with flexion deformity at the DIP joint. And the answer is Option D. MCP and PIP joint hyperextension with flexion deformity at DIP joint. Now let's move to question number 209. A patient is receiving acupuncture for hemiplegia caused by a stroke. The picture represents acupuncture therapy which applied to the skin superficial tissue. Sometimes acupuncture is combined with transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation to stimulate nerves. Which form of tense incorporate the use of acupuncture needle? Option A. Burst mode tense. Option B. Brief intense tense. Option C. Low stimulation tense. Option D. Traditional tense. And the answer is... Option C. Low stimulation tense. Now let's move to question number 210. 
the term for the absence of microorganism that cause infection and the creation of sterile field in which of the following option a isolation option b disinfection option c sepsis option d infection and the answer is option c sepsis now let's move to question number 211 a patient has experienced significant burns he is leaving the hospital setting and going home the physical therapist recognizes he is apprehensive about the changes and mentions some resources to him which resource has the evidence shown to provide long term benefit for patient recovering from severe injury option a mobile burn unit option b media resources option c support group option d in patient team and the answer is option c support group now let's move to question number 212 A patient is receiving burst mode tens. What is the common frequency of burst? Option A, two to three bursts per second. Option B, four to five bursts per second. Option C, seven to eight bursts per second. Option D, nine to ten bursts per second. And the answer is option A, two to three bursts per second. Now let's move to question number two one three. Adila is a school teacher with neck and shoulder pain. She is receiving massage and tens treatment. What special effect does the kneading a muscle have? Option A stimulate the tissue produce a feeling of invigoration. Option B reduce adhesion and scar. Option C helps to restore movement between tissue in reference. Option D release collagen bonds and the answer is Option C helps to restore the movement between tissue in reference. Now let's move to question number 214. The stance phase of the gait includes all except Which of the following? Option A, initial contact. Option B, swing. Option C, mid stance. Option D, heel off. And the answer is option B, swing. Now let's move to question number two one five. A patient has difficulty extend her arm at the shoulder. Which muscle extends the arm at the shoulder and the forearm at the elbow? Option A, biceps brachii. Option B, triceps brachii. Option C, brachialis. Option D angonias and the answer is option B triceps brachii now let's move to question number 216 your client has peripheral neuropathy with history of arterial insufficiency he has a wound that is even and well defined with variable amount of exudate and granulation tissue which of the following wound is this patient most likely to have option a arterial ulcer option b pressure ulcer option c venous ulcer option d diabetic ulcer and the answer is option d diabetic ulcer now let's move to question number 217 on the structural element involved in the gas exchange in respiration option a alveoli option b capillary option c alveolar capillary membrane option d red blood cells and the answer is option a alveoli now let's move to question number 218 your patient has suffered a stroke that involves rupture of the artery that goes into the brain what type of stroke is this option a transient ischemic attack option b ischemic stroke Option C hemorrhagic stroke option D subarachnoid hemorrhage and the answer is option C hemorrhagic stroke the resting pulse in pregnancy is option A decreased by 20 bpm option B decreased by 10 to 15 bpm option C unchanged option D increased by 10 to 15 bpm and the answer is Option D increased by 10 to 15 ppm. Now let's move to question number 220. The supine position is important during the late pregnancy because it may cause all of the following except option A complete occlusion of the inferior vena cava, option B a significant decrease in the maternal ventilatory capacity, option C hypotension and syncope, option D a significant reduction in renal blood flow and glomerular filtration. And the answer is Option B a significant decrease in the maternal ventilatory capacity. 
So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please mention in the comment box. I think you have learned something valuable today. See you in the next session. That's part 12. Thank you. Bye bye.